Okay, hi everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I am Chef Fitu of BBA third semester, your moderator for this session. And welcome to the webinar on intellectual property rights. Before we dive right into the session, I want all the participants to be informed that we will be having two sessions, each session taken up by two very special resource persons. So before I give time to our very first resource person, I would like to give time to Dr. Chico Saletingo, the uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and Management of Tetsu College, to deliver a welcome note. Okay, so um, hi everyone, good morning once again. And uh, yes, I on behalf of Tetsu College and the Intelli um, Innovation, Incubation and Intellectual Property Rights Cell of Tetsu College would like to extend my warmest welcome to each and every one of you present here, especially our resource persons uh, from the Patent Information Center, Nagaland Science and Technology Council, Ms. Gyu Kalichishi, who is the uh, technical in charge at PIC NESTEC, and Mr. Kekunil Lutu, who is a Scientist B, Biotechnology Division of NESTEC. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of our event. Uh, we extend our warmest welcome. And before I hand over the time to our moderator, I would first like to share a little bit about our college. So um, Tetsu College was established in the year 1994 and we are sponsored by the Council of Rengma Baptist Churches. So I'm also very proud to announce that uh, our college has been, you know, consistently securing gold medals in the university's final exams. And we are also one of the uh, most technologically advanced institutions here in Nagaland. So uh, the college, in order to, you know, promote, in order to encourage and to provide a platform for entrepreneurship and innovation, decided to set up this particular IIIPR cell. And, uh, you know, this even this webinar that we have conducted today is one of our first major activities. And we are truly delighted to be collaborating with your esteemed department. So I hope this is going to be a great learning opportunities for all of us present here. Our students are still joining. Let me just inform our resource persons, we have got students from BBA, we have got students from BCOM and BCA. So these are the ma uh, majority of the audiences comprising here. And it's a new topic for each and every one of us. So I hope Kay, we are all going to learn a lot from this. We also hope to be able to, you know, work with you and uh, organize many more such events in the coming future also. So once again, welcome to each and every one of you. And thank you so much. Back to you, Chef B. Thank you so much, Miss, for your warmest welcome. And now, so the most important part of the first session, I would like to introduce Mr. Kekunil, Scientist B, Biotechnology Division of NASTIC. He has been working in the department for 10 years. He has uh, given over 30 talks on IPR and has been involved in numerous in-house projects related to studies and research in biotechnology and life sciences. At present, Mr. Kekunil is handling many ongoing projects as a PR, PI and co-PI. Sir, the time is yours. Well, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, we are very happy. We're also very honored to have, you know, like this time collaborating with you. We are very much forward to having this kind of program. So especially this, uh, I want to thank the triple PR. I hope that is uh, what it is called. It's triple I PR, yes. Yes, uh, triple I PR, okay. As our Madam Chikosale Tingo has uh, said, so we have heard about the Tetsu College since many years back. And this is why I think uh, the Patent Information Center having to collaborate with you and having this kind of program is one of its kind for the first time. So we are very happy. We are very fortunate even to have you in our, to have you in our linkage. So, I thank the organizers. I thank all of you for for taking this uh, a note 
on this uh, IP or especially intellectual property right. As you all know, this is one of the most important topics, which is uh, having a very relevant importance to our day-to-day -day life, as well as especially for the upcoming generations. As we embark on some kind of uh, Mac in India or entrepreneurship activities, this is one of the most important thing that will come into play and this will definitely lead us into a new uh into a new paradigm para the paradigm shift so i'm very happy to be here with you all so without uh, much further ado let me try to get into the overview of what exactly the IPR is. So I will try to upload my PPT. Ah, yes, hello. Yes. Uh, can you able to see my screen? Yes, it's a white screen right now. Okay. Uh, no PPT. I mean, we can just see a blank uh, PPT screen, I think. Really? Yes. Uh, Okay. Okay. Well, is it visible now? 
The PPT is the not PPT visible. Is not visible. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, sir. Yes. Yes, would you like to share your PPT with me through email? That way I'll present it for you and maybe you can do the explanation from your end. Uh, or what do you say? I think, yeah, I think that should be better. I'll just Let's, share my email me, with you here. Uh, is it not visible yet? Oh, yes, it's my visible screen. now. It is. Okay. It Well, okay. Uh, can you able to see this? Yes, sir. We can. Yes, see we it. are able. Okay. So sorry for that. You know, like uh, I don't know, there was a technical glitch out here. But anyway, uh, is no it worries. visible now? Yes, yes, it's visible, sir. Okay. So let me start from here so we today we are going to talk about the intellectual property rights and its components especially it's a the intellectual property rights have uh, different forms which we will talk about today so this is just brief and a short uh, kind of a gist kind of intellectual property rights we are not going very much into the detail the technical officer from our department will be sharing a little more in detail about the copyrights and the other few other things so in the next session you can able to put forward you know like uh, your technical questions or anything that is uh, baffling your mind to put up in the discussion so to start up with uh, let me start with uh, something that we are doing since the inception till now so the Patent Information Center Nagaland was established in 2011. So this was the only organization in Nagaland dealing with the IPR issues, meaning to say the, the nodal organizations dealing with the IPR issues in the state. So this was uh, supported and facilitated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India through the TIFEC. So TIFEC, the Technology Information Forecasting Assessment and Communication. So it is a funding from DST, Government of India. So we have started this in 2011 with an objectives for IPR awareness and consultation among the people in the state to facilitate universities, industries, government departments, R&D institutions, and other stakeholders for patent filing, patent searches, GI registration, copyrights, new plant varieties, etc. So this IPR sales uh, is also established so that we could able to put up uh, the IPR sales in the universities or Institute of Higher Education. And also it's one mandate is also to provide free patent searches for the stakeholders. Now, so far, since the establishment in 2011, we have already created uh, five IPR cells in different uh, universities and uh, departments. So these are some of the, uh, these are the five IPR cells we have already set up. The first, uh, one is uh, Nagali University, that is a School of Engineering Technology, the Mapper under Biotechnology Department. The other is at Pakai Christian College under Geology Department. The other is at Nagali University, Lumami Campus. Then we have uh, one at Kohima Science College, Josoma, an autonomous body. I mean the autonomous institution. Then we have also a cell that has been set up in industries and commerce department. So these are some of our annual activities. We 
give out awareness seminar on IPR. We also uh, give uh, this seminar Henry. to school. Hello. Henry, uh, Hello. your slide is not moving. Oh, it's not moving. Yeah. Oh, really? How is that? Can you able to see it? We can see your slide, but it's not moving. It's still stuck in the third slide. Third. Okay. Uh, let me check. One. Is it still stuck? Uh, Hello. It's, yes. it's still in the third slide. So, uh, which slide uh, you are in at the moment? The five IPR cell setup. Okay. The third slide. Okay. So, Can you upload it again? Let me try once more. Okay. Mm, is it still not moving? No. It's not going forward. I don't know about others, but uh, here it's not moving in my system. Same here. It's still stuck in the third slide. That's okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know what is exactly going on but okay let me try once more How is it getting able to see my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so, now you're in fourth slide. Yeah, I will put on show mode. Yeah, kindly do that. Is it, is it an okay now? Yeah, we can see your slide. Any other activities? Yes. Okay, so let me put a step forward. Is it okay? Is it moving? Uh, no, no, it's not moving. It's in fourth slide. Can you move to fifth slide? Yeah, that's why I'm trying that. What is uh? It's in fourth slide next? only. So the one which I have. Then could you send your PPT to the madam so that uh, she can share it? Okay, let's try that one. Yes. In the meantime. Uh, I will try to forward it. All right. So can you able to kindly text me the PPT or? Uh, I've shared my email ID in the chat box. Okay, okay. Yes.
I just received it. Please give me a few, uh, a minute or so as I, you know, share it with you guys. All right. Okay. Sir, you may go ahead. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, and also my apology for that, uh, the technical problems. Okay, so from here, we will take it forward. So the annual activities that we do usually is uh, awareness on IPR, which are conducted annually for the colleges, NGOs, entrepreneurs, departments and the other stakeholders like farmers. We also take uh, facilitations in patent filing and patent searches or for GI registration, copyright, trademark, new plant varieties, etc. And also we carried out a patent search through procured database. This is a, a database which uh, we have procured, but this facility is being outsourced to the stakeholders uh, free of cost like Ekeswa, that is a software where you can able to see all the, you know, like the uh, kind of innovations that you have. If you put in the database, you can able to see whether these particular kind of inventions or your innovative ideas are already being protected under IPL, uh, this IP law. So this is the kind of search you can able to avail through our annual activities. Now, the next is like a post GI awareness. We have uh, different components, which we will talk about uh, later, but uh, presently GI is one of the most uh, like the current activities or the core activities that we are carrying out for the state. There are so many forms of uh, IPR, which we will talk about, but this is one of it. So, uh, okay, you can move to the next. Yes. So what is uh, IPR? Intellectual property rights. This broadly refers to the creations of human mind. So it could be anything that comes out of uh, your ideas, your uh, ingenuity, your innovativeness. As you can able to, you know, like uh, fathom that it is a kind of intangible property. So that does means that uh, it is not a kind of uh, the actual product, but a kind of ideas or the kind of uh, te techniques or the kind of uh, ingenuity that can be transformed into something useful is a kind of uh, intellectual property right. So these are also a kind of rights that are granted to inventors of the intellectual property and the other the other attribute of this ipr is that it can be assigned to someone it can be gifted it can also be sold or it can be licensed like any other property though it is an intangible property all the kind of uh, attributes that a tangible property can do the ipr can do for the same so IPR have to be renewed, in, in fact, from time to time for keeping them in force. To keep them under the protections of the law, it has to be renewed. So it depends from uh, one form of IPR rise to the other form that we will discuss a little bit uh, further. And also, this is also the right 
which can be enjoyed not only just in one country, like we have uh, in our own country, if we have one right, that is kind of exclusive right that we enjoyed in a particular country, but IPR right can be sought or can be filed in different countries. In how many countries you want to uh, make your innovations, your patent or copyright or trademark being protected, you can file in different countries. So this is one particular kind of right which can be enjoyed in more than one country. Okay, next please. Okay, so here, now why intellectual property rights are important in academia? There are lots and lots of reasons and benefits apart from these things, but uh, some of the main important things is it can be used uh, in teaching. It is uh, beneficial for teaching purposes. It is for research purposes, for R&D, for technology transfer, or for entrepreneurship. Because IP, these intellectual property rights give protections. Uh, in an instance, like if you create a product or publish a book or find a new drug or anything that is novel, intellectual property rights ensures that you benefit from that uh, the work which is which is authentic to you this rights protects uh, your creations of or work from unfair use by others the ip creates and support paying jobs as well through these uh, protections of your right you can able to transfer this to a firm or to a like a, a production company so that through your ip that is your ai intellectual property you can able to produce a kind of a work so this uh this also is useful in collaborative engagement or in contracts with private sector for ip commercialization it also rewards for inventive faculty and staff and also enhance student entrepreneurship it also can able to create new revenue resources in a form that uh, for example you create a new thing so once you create a new thing that unless and until it has been made into a commercialization or into a product form it is not that much uh, useful so once you have an idea you have got a steps uh, how to how it has been produced or how it is to be used then first you can able to protect that and transfer it to a kind of a production company that can outsource it for public utility so that is when all these uh, kind of ipr rise comes into play and it also can able to create a lot of benefits not only just to academia but to any inventors okay next please so these these are the different forms of ipr we have the patents that is one form of the ipr we have the trademarks the other form of the ipr copyrights we have uh, industrial designs plant variety trade secrets layout designs of integrated circuits geographical indications so these are the different forms of ipr together we call it intellectual property rights so many people of course uh, have uh, have a confusion about even the different forms of ipr because mostly when we at a current scenario when we see even in kind of uh, our own official documents or in kind of day-to-day -day conversations we used to come across people using the terminology in a very uh, confusion manner or in an ambiguity so ipr does means all of these different forms of protections are ip protections not only that it is about patent usually 
people confuse this IPR with patenting. So we have to have a clear terminology because each component of this IPR relates to something different and it protects in a different manner, not just as the same like the patent. So patent is a different from, it's, a, it's only a component or a form of an IPR, not just that the uh, patent does means everything about the IPR. So let's go forward. Okay, next please. Yes, this, uh, this is a kind of example, like, uh, can I patent my copyrighted trademark? So there is a lot of confusion, something, or say people, even uh, many educated people, they misuse uh, the terminology. What exactly is the IPR and what is patent or maybe copyright or trademark? So as you have seen earlier in the earlier slide, that IPR includes different forms of uh, these uh, intellectual property rights guarded under each component. But uh, usually patent is something, it's only a component and it's something to deal with a kind of uh, innovations, which we will talk about uh, in the next slides following it. So, okay, so this is patents. Patent is an exclusive right granted to an inventor or applicant to make, use, and sell an invention for a specific, uh, specified number of years. So here, patent protection means that the in, in invention cannot be commercially made with, without the consent of the owner, or it cannot be used, distributed, or sold without the consent of the owner. So what is the main attribute or say the kind of category? If you say that I want to patent my uh, uh, intellectual property, for example, if you say that I want to patent my intellectual property, then under which form it should come? Like if it is falling under this patent category, then th there should be this main three criteria. So this under uh, to be eligible to be patented the main three criteria that you should be knowing is the first one is it should be novel novel in the sense that it is a new idea it is a new form it is a new thing that has never been done by anyone else in a public domain so novelty it does means that something which is new okay there could be a little bit confusion when we talk about novelty but here it should be novel does means that a per, i mean for example a friend of yours might have the same idea but it has never been used elsewhere or it has been never been published elsewhere or it has never come to the public domain, then here in a technical term, it can be said that uh, it is novel, even though maybe some of your uh, peer groups or some of your friends or maybe relatives know something about the same idea that you have, but they should not go into the public domain in order to qualify for this novelty. So in order for anything, to come under this patent protection, it has to be novel. That is one main main thing, and that is the first thing. Now, it should also involve invent, inventive state. So inventive state here does means that uh, it is not obvious, non-obvious. So this is the kind of thing that the same kind of procedure has never been used uh, with a scientific backup by any other person. So there has to be uh, inventive states. 
And the third one is capable of industrial application. So these two are related, in fact. So there has to be some inventive steps that leads to the industrial application. So that should be beneficial to the public for utility. So the first thing, of course, there are more detail into the technical things of this patent, but these are the main three uh, criteria or the attributes that should give you whether your, your idea is qualified for patenting. So the first thing is novelty, that is, it should be novel. It should have some inventive steps. That should means that uh, it means that that should involve some process or methods that leads to a product which can give you an industrial application. So these are the main thing which uh, you can able to remember whether whatever you have, the kind of idea, the kind of, uh, you know, like uh, prototype that you have designed or the kind of uh, uh, the things that you observe and think that it can be transformed into something. So these are the main three things. If you have these three particular uh, criteria, these three criteria, then definitely you can able to go forward for your patenting process. Now, the term for the patent, patent is 20 years from the date of filing. So as you know, this patenting also cannot be indefinite because uh, ultimately that will come to the public domain and anyone can able to use uh, your idea or the kind of prototype that you design. So it does means that uh, the patents will give you an, uh, the ownership only for 20 years. And within these 20 years, you have to make something out of it. As we have talked about the IPR, uh, in the earlier slides that be, within these 20 years, you have to make use of it for your own, for your own benefit, I mean to say. So you can able to translate this into an industrial uh, application by tying up or by collaborating with an industry, or you can able to sell this to some kind of firm or industries, or you can able to give this to someone who can able to make use of it so that you in the, in the meantime get benefit or else after 20 years all these uh, your ideas the innovations or invention will become a public property next please so this is uh these are some examples for example these are uh, earmuffs that we use commonly during winters here very common in our even on, among our people this is also a kind of a patented item. So it was patented in 1877. So way back, even during 1877, even uh, the United States Patent Office, US, USPO, they have started even patenting to some kind of items such as this, like earmuffs. Then we have uh, famous like anti-gravity, shoe invented by Michael Jackson, patented in 1993. And then now, as you all know, that these are already, you know, like, uh, these are already uh, expired, so to speak. So it has already come in public domain. And this is also an ex another example that a simple, such a simple item as this, like paper clip, it was also invented and been patented. So we can able to think of you know, like uh, it, it doesn't mean that invention doesn't mean that it could be something very complicated. It doesn't mean that it has to be, you know, something very big or it seems like uh, too valuable, but simple as this, like paper clip or even a needle is an example that it has already been patented and the patent the patentee has already had reaped a lot of benefits. So we can able to do something from even from a very small starting. That is what patent is all about. Okay, next please. So copyright, uh, these forms of the IPR right definitely 
will be covered by my colleagues in the next session. But here, this is a brief uh, idea about what copyright is all about. Copyright is a type of intellectual property that gives its owner the exclusive right to make copies of a creative work. So here, it uh, to differentiate with patent, here it deals mostly with the literary works or computer like uh, computer software or artistic works or say like uh, musical compositions or dramatic works or in motion pictures and other audio visual works so when there are some ideas or innovations or ingenuity that comes out from you regarding from this uh, particular kind of uh, field or subject area, so to speak. And it doesn't qualify rightly into the patent, uh, patenting domain. Then you can able to seek the copyright protection. So it depends on what type of uh, subject area you are into or what type of, uh, you know, like ingenuity you want to create. So like uh, if it is copyright, then you will be doing, uh, say, if you are involved more on like uh, artistic work, uh, drama or motion pictures, audio visuals, or even computer software, this, all this uh, kind of uh, new idea, novel idea can be protected under this copyright. So this, of course, is a first. This has got a much longer protection. We have got uh, 60 years in case of artistic work and a lifetime plus the 60 years. And then for broadcasting, the term is uh, for uh, 25 years. So this a little more into detailed technical things will be taken up by my colleagues in the next section. Okay, next please. So here is another form of uh, IPR, which is called trademark. So trademark, as you know, trade is a form of, I mean, it's a term synonymous with uh, business. So you know it very well that uh, trademarks protects the unique name or a design or logo or symbols or color or colors used by a business establishment to identify their products or services from other businesses or from other products. So here, this trademark, the term of protection is uh, for 10 years, but it can be renewed indefinitely by paying renewal fees. So every day we come across this kind of trademark, you know it very well, and then you know even the benefit of uh, what uh, actually the trademark could be, even in your own imagination. Because, for example, when we see a kind of uh, like a branded name like uh, Philips or Coca-Cola, or for example, it could be McDonald or Adidas, so or Titan, for example, these, the authenticity of their production or the authenticity of their goods is being protected through the kind of trademark, which is attached to their product so that uh, people can able to identify one product from the other and also people can able to be uh, they can able to check whether this particular good is uh, authentically authentically uh, being produced by that particular company so here since we have got a trademark uh, protection if anybody for example or if uh, any other companies they try to imitate or they try to uh, mimicry some of these, uh, their trademark protected signs or design or logo or symbols, it can be sued. So through this protection, the kind of authenticity is being maintained as well as um, even these, you know, like the people misusing uh, people misusing the kind of similar products that they produce using some kind of similar names or using some kinds of uh, different names is being protected through this trademark. So for business establishment, in order to make 
advantages over the other business or to maintain your authenticity or to make a kind of, you know, like uh, your own hold in a market uh, arena, definitely trademark is also a must. So these are all a kind of like, for example, like if you have a patent, definitely you can able to design a prototype. You can able to produce uh, through your own establishment or with collaboration, uh, collab in collaboration with the other business firms or production company. And in the meantime, you can able to put a trademark on that. So this is a form. Now, these are some of the examples. For example, MSN's uh, butterfly, this is a kind of a trademark or say Nike, IBM, LG. So it, different forms can be used as a trademark. For example, picture drawings or combination of letters and designs, or it could also be kind of a slogans. So these are the type of, uh, it, it depends on the choice of the person concerned what type of uh, trademark he or she wants to use. But this is not just uh, uh, confined to just one particular thing. So you have got an ample of choices where you can able to take uh, your, take it as your trademark for registration. Okay, next please. So even like uh, besides the signs, symbols, you can also use uh, sound marks. For example, we have uh, the starting sound of Harley Davidson bike, which is a kind of trademark and is also been protected under this uh, trademark registration. Then we have uh, we, the one which we are also very familiar with, the MGMs. Lion's Roar is also a protected uh, trademark. So these are some kind of different forms where you can able to use it. Okay, then we have an, uh, the other form of IPR, uh, the other parameter where we can able to, you know, like protect is your industrial design. So it relates to feature of shape or configuration, pattern, ornament, or compositions of lines or colors applied to any article in 2D or 3D or in both forms. So this is the kind of industrial design, not only these, uh, uh, for example, copyright or kind of uh, say like there are different forms of IPR. So if you cannot able to protect the kind of uh, innovations that you have under, for example, under patent, then definitely you can able to apply it even in an industrial design. So if it's just a kind of shape or a configuration, so which may not uh, qualify for certain criteria under patent due to the fact that it may have been used by some other persons somewhere, or it could have been something like uh, it could not able to produce a kind of inventive steps. But still then, if there is some kind of uniqueness and which have got the advantages over the existing products or the kind of existing methods, then definitely you can able to use even these uh, forms of IPR to protect your uh, to put, protect your intellectual uh, intellectual property. So uh, the term of protection is initially for a period of ten years, but it also can be renewed for another five years by paying a renewal fee but later on after after this term of period then it has to come to the public domain for public uh, as a form of public property now we have the next this is an example like uh, frank Mueller, the watch example just an example only okay you can go ahead this is a design of uh, Coca-Cola, the bottle design, all these are being protected under industrial design. So this does means that if a person wants to produce a bottle similar to this or exactly like this, they cannot able to do so 
because it has been already been protected by Coca-Cola company. So either they have to take a permission from them for free or free use, or they have to pay a kind of uh, tech, uh, te technology fee or a kind of uh, royalty fee to them. So unless and until a person obtain the kind of permission from this particular company who have already protected the design through, through this IPR, no one can able to use these similar forms or the like of these things or the same of these things. Okay, we can move on. So this is one example. Uh, this is a kind of um, a popular example. Now, this is very familiar with us. You know very well, everyone, each one of us, we're using either, you know, like um, any, there are different types of now already the mobile companies. There are lots now, but this one example is Samsung smartphones. Before the introductions or before the launch of this uh, Apple's iPhone, the kind of uh, design that they have is uh, having, you know, like uh, the kind of keep it in a separate and the screens are there separated. Now, I Apple's iPhone, they launch, uh, as you can able to see here in the middle, they launch uh, this kind of screen in 2007. Now, later on, what happens is uh, Samsung smartphone, they have copied this, smartphones design from iPhone without the permissions of this, uh, without, without the permissions of Apple. So the, the Apple company sued the Samsung company and they have to pay a huge amount of uh, money. They have to pay a huge amount for the damages to the iPhone. So these are just a kind of awareness that unless and until we get a permission for something which has already been protected on the IPR, there could be, a, you know, like a, a big problem as well as uh, we cannot able to, we are not legally right to use any of their design or any of their uh, say even like uh, similar types of these things without their permission. So this is just an example. Okay, we can move forward. So there is also another forms of um, IPR, which is called layout design of integrated circuits. So this is especially for the electronics uh, uh, subject area. So this particularly is for protections of semiconductor. I see layout designs because uh, in, you know, like uh, electronics engineering, we have a layout, uh, I see layout, which can be, which can be laid into different forms. So when this kind of things cannot be protected under, for example, industrial design, when this cannot be protected under copyright, for example, computer software, uh, or it cannot be patented because this uh, this particular form of semiconductor layout doesn't uh, qualifies for, for example, patent or it doesn't qualifies for qualif uh, I mean copyright. So it has got a separate form to protect this kind of uh, innovative ideas or even the novelty or the kind of uh, prototype design. So this includes a layout of transistors, other uh, circuitry elements includes lead wires connecting such elements. So even these forms of, uh, these forms of layout can be protected under a particular form of IPR, which is called layout design of integrated circuits. And the term, the term is for 10 years from the date of filing. Now we have next. Now this is another form of IPR again. We call it a uh, plant variety protections and farmers right. So it is a system for protect protection of plant varieties, the right of farmers and plant breeders to encourage the development of new varieties of plants. So here, this could be an hybrid. 
even this could be a new like uh, discovery sometimes uh, even a new kind of uh, discovery without uh, here without even uh, hybridization can be protected under plant variety protection if it is new it has got some advantages over you know like the, the existing crops or the cultivars then this also can be protected under farmers right and here the term for uh, this plant's variety protection is uh, 18 years from the date of registration so here it does also means the same thing like uh, the other ipr rights that once you are protected under this one if you have good uh, ownership a person cannot able to multiply or propagate the same kind of crops or the same kind of uh, plant variety without your permission so it is uh, similar with the other types of ip protection well okay then we have next so this is uh, an example like uh, castor apple golden variety so these are kind of hybrid mk uh, an mk1 example that is uh, coming from india then the ranch 101 uh, 101 groundnut these are also a kind of like uh, hybrids but still these forms of um, uh, these forms of uh, crops can be protected well next so the next one we have is a trade secret so this is something a little you know like fancy in a sense because it could be a formula a pattern business information customer information methodology or strategic plans so a trade secret here which have uh, a kind of commercial value or it could be some kind of the recipes even uh, cooking recipes it can be protected under trade secret but the fancy thing here is uh, here it is uh, unlimited duration as long as it is secret so as long as you expose it or as long as uh, you have uh, you know like put out in a public domain then it will remain as a trade secret and the one thing is it is automatically granted and no legal action required so this is the form of you know like uh, this is the form of uh, ipr protection which can even give uh, to up to that extent for example kfc as you all know very well kfc is spread out all over the world and it is one of the most you know like uh, common thing you see in a market in a you know like uh, for chicken uh, fried chicken but you see that except these kfc's no one knows the exact recipe how it has been prepared and how it has been made so they have protected that uh, as in the form of uh, the recipe as in the form of trade secret and so they since they have got a legal protection no one can able to force them to you know like uh, let them know or the, no one can able to threaten them to let them uh, publish or put up in a, do a public domain what how exactly is the recipe of preparation of that uh, kfc the same goes with coca-cola the recipe for preparations of this coca-cola is also been protected so no one knows how exactly it's been prepared the only persons uh, who knows is the one inside their company and it is also it has been one of the most well protected uh, kind of uh, recipe or trade secret so far because uh, even like anecdote like uh, this uh, anecdote story is like you know that the person knowing the recipe for preparation of coca-cola there are only two persons who knows about these things and then they are not even allowed to travel in the same flight because they think that if one person dies the other person knows but if both for example in a plane crash if both of them died then the i mean the recipe for this will be lost forever so this is the kind of for example it's an anecdote but still then people they protect even up to such an extent that their product or the authenticity of the product is being protected up to that level well okay let's uh, move on again so this is uh, 
the last forms of IPR. And also for us, this also have got a uh, big relevance in a sense that uh, here, one of our, you know, like uh, disadvantages or the drawbacks is something like uh, when it comes to patenting or when it comes to these uh, industrial designs or when it comes to these uh, other forms of IPR, then we have some limitations in a sense that we don't have that much uh, research institutions or the kind of uh, organizations or agency that promote uh, innovations. And also we have a very less uh, startups. We have a very, very less industries. So uh, this, the other forms of IPR, although it is same and also it is uh, equivalent to other forms of IP protection, but GI here as a public property, we have been doing a lot of this uh, as a kind of major activity for us also, but even like uh, traditional knowledge systems or say the kind of crops or the other forms of knowledge can be protected under these GI indications. We call it in short, we call it uh, commonly as GI. So it is a name or sign used on certain products which corresponds to specific geographical locations or origin. So it could be in a region, it could be a town, it could be a country. So any kind of products, whether it is a natural or whether it is a man-made can be, you know, like protected under this GI. So it is an aid. It's a certification that the, the product poses certain qualities and is made according to traditional methods or enjoys a certain reputation due to its geographical origin. So this is one of the main uh, criteria because uh, here you may have a little confusion with the other, you know, like uh, plant variety protections and the other things, but here it is more to to deal with the kind of, uh, you know, like uh, quality. So it could be a handmade thing, but the kind of quality that it produced in a particular area or by a particular sections of people has got an advantages or have got a unique qualities, which are, this could be same. For example, a handicraft, which could be produced in the other states uh, of uh, other parts of India, but for example, if we have got a particular kind of handicrafts or hand loom, handcrafts, then if it have got a certain quality or have got a uniqueness in comparison with the other production that is coming out from the other state, then definitely we can able to give a tag of GI. Then also like for a natural products, like it could be a crops, it could be a kind of a forest product, it could be a kind of uh, other cultivars, but if there is a certain quality due to its uh, geographical locations or geotopographic conditions, that it gives a certain forms of taste, which is unique or certain forms of flavor that it gives is unique from the other kind of, uh, the kind of products that is com coming from other states or country, then we can able to give a GI uh, tag to that. So we have some few uh, in our states now. And this, the term of protection is initially for 10 years, but it can be renewed indefinitely by paying renewal fees. So we have uh, some few examples here in the slide ahead. So this is some GI from Nagaland. We have issues here even, but still then these are the GI which are take to, you know, like uh, Nagaland. So we have uh, Nagamircha with a GI number of 109. Then we have Nagatri Tomato with a GI number of 374. Then the Chakasan Shoals, GI number 542. Then uh, we have uh, GI Logor, I mean, uh, we have a Naga Cucumber with GI number of uh, 640. So these are some of the these are some of the few examples that we have already registered under our name, that is uh, under the state of Nagaland. So, you see, uh, Nagamircha is already been registered because of its uniqueness, 
not just because of it, the hot, hotness, of course it has, but still then, uh, just to give you an example or the kind of, you know, like uh, the criteria, how it has been uh, possible for GI registration. Because it could be sometimes, it could be some kind of uh, endemic that which is only found in Nagaland. So those kind of crops can be protected under GI. But in case, like if it is also found in the other parts of India, but the kind of, it could be, for example, chili, Nagamircha type of chili, but if it has, the, the one which is produced in Nagaland has got a unique taste, a kind of unique flavor, or a kind of unique hotness, then definitely these kind of uh, products, inertial products, can be qualified for GI protection. Now we have another example like Chagasan Shoals, which it is, uh, as you can able to think, that Chagasan shoals are not only the unique uh, shoals found in Nagaland that we all know that. We have got each tribe having a different uh, attires, traditional attires, and each unique and different from uh, the other tribes. So, but this is one of the first, uh, you know, like uh, for our attires, Naga traditional attires, this is one of the first uh, attires being protected under GI in Nagaland. And this has been facilitated by uh, NASTEC, uh, by the PIC of uh, NASTEC. So in here, we have uh, not only just one shoals, but we have a different form of shoals, which are orig originated from Chagasan, protected under this GI uh, tech. Now we are also in the process of uh, trying out for more uh, GI registration for other tribes as well. but. The one thing that we should be aware about is, even in the case of GI registration, now we have come across lots of people already uh, trying to get the GI registration without the consent of our own people. For example, even Nagatri Tomato, though it is comes to our name, the ownership is not rightfully our, I mean, uh, the ownership is not by the Nagatri. So it's a kind of sad thing, but these are some already been already registered. And there are lots of researches even going on in this uh, particular treatment, like for example, cosmetic products, the South India, even here in our country, lots of research are going on and very promising, even uh, products are coming up, but still they are not in the public domain still. But we have heard that the laws of this, thing. but the advantage is uh, like if we have this ownership, then definitely this kind of uh, like royalty or the kind of benefit should come to us. But while we don't have that much of awareness on this GI, people have already taken up and registered. Though it is called Nagatri Tomato, but still the ownership is not ours. So we don't know for sure how we can able to, you know, like retract those things and bring to our ownership. We are trying for that as well. but. Uh, these are some of the things which are already a kind of a bygone case, but in the days to come, we are also trying for different items and also for different uh, traditional attires. And also like uh, Nagar Mircha, we have already produced, uh, we have already got a GI tech, but recently we have heard uh, in a lot of, uh, in, in medias that these are, Naga chilies are being, uh, Naga kin chilies are being exported to other countries. But the one, in order to reap the benefit from GI protection, we have to use the kind of name which is attributed to the GI registration. Not, for example, like if you use Naga kin chili, then that is not protected under GI. So if you want to use that uh, for the benefit of GI, then we have to use Nagamircha rather than Nagakinchili or Bhujjolokia or any other names. So these are being registered so that people doesn't misuse it or we get advantages of this, I mean commercial advantages over the other products, similar products that is coming out 
for example, like even maybe in the neighboring states like Manipur, they have uh, productions of these kinchilis. Then even Assam, there it is famous uh, with the name of uh, Bujalokia. So these are some of the things that we should be aware about and try to promote and give awareness even to our own near and dear ones so that this kind of awareness can bring about some kind of changes so that Nagas as a people or a community can able to benefit rather than exploitation from some other people. So this is what uh, we mean to say. Okay, so this is uh, these are the eight forms of um, GI. So our intellectual property, we need to say the creations of our mind, the ingenuity or the novelty, the kind of, uh, you know, like uh, new ideas that comes forward from us can be protected in a variety of ways if you know the way how to go about. But uh, for example, you have a new idea and say, if you cannot able to protect that, then people can able to misuse it or for example you may have a new idea but that doesn't of course like let me add this also that it doesn't have any uh, like benefit or say advantages over the existing one then perhaps it could be just a kind of uh, maybe you may not be so interested in going about of this uh, jail protection i mean uh, ipr protection but if you feel and think that you have got some kind of raw ideas or some kind of uh, uh, these uh, ideas to create something which is different and maybe having a little advantage over even the existing one. It could be a modification. It could be just a change of process. But still then all these forms can come under a particular forms of GI protections. So we should be aware about these things and make, it, uh, make use of these things. And PIC, uh, Nagaland Science and Technology Council is here so that any kind of that things, if you have got any ideas or kind of, uh, you know, like uh, innovations, which you are stuck up. For example, that I don't want to share this with every, every, every person. And also, we also must take some care because nowadays we have got a, we have got a fancy trends kind of uh, that everything that we know of or say a kind of a new idea or the kind of these things we quickly publish in a we quickly publish in front of like maybe in a youtube or in a kind of video just uh, circulating in, in a public media so these are some of the things which you should not be doing very like uh, quickly or very frequently if you think that there is something, your idea, which is novel, which can do some kind of benefit to the society, it doesn't mean that you will not share with the public. The idea of this IPR is so that the inventors or the person who give idea gets the benefit and also share to the public. So uh, the kind of new idea, instead of just putting quickly forward uh, to the public domain, you can able to just put it uh, within, try to frame up some kind of prototype which will make into some kind of utilizable product. Then you can come forward, say to any of this, uh, we have shown the IPR cells that is uh, IPR cells that we have given and also directly to us so that we can able to, though we don't give a registration, though we don't give a patent, you know, like uh, IPR protection as such, because that is not possible because for each different um, forms of IPR, we have a separate office even within India, just one office like for a particular uh, IPR form. So if you have all any of this type, then you can bring forward your ideas. We can able to forward it or we can able to facilitate your ideas or we can able to facilitate even as a group or maybe as a college you can able to take forward your ideas, which can be protected. So this is what we want to share with you today. And so thank you so much for your patient hearing as well as for this beautiful time. And also like uh, we look forward in the near future for more collaborations. 
And before I wanna why not? Let me also once again apologize for that, uh, you know, the extra time that I've already taken in the beginning because of the, the technical glitch that happened from my end. I hope uh, you will understand that because uh, today is an actually, or uh, actually, today our office is uh, like uh, kind of holiday only. So we are back home to our own. So I have got a little uh, problem in arranging that quickly up. So please excuse for that as well. But uh, we look forward that uh, we will have more uh, technical collaborations in the days to come as well. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We kind of gained a lot of knowledge from you and we are very grateful for that. Now I give time to the participants to raise any questions if they have any. Okay, so I see that they have already raised their questions in the chat box. Um, so should I read out for you or you will check it by yourself and answer to them? Well, okay, I'm looking at that as well, but uh, if I miss out anything, Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so these are some of the questions. Yes, I can able to see. So, right. thank you for raising these questions. I don't know how far I can able to set you, uh, take up this and satisfy your, you know, like uh, questions. But do justice to that questions. But let me try my best to say whatever I know about particular thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar. Uh, he has a question. Uh, is there any relationship between trademark applications and radical innovation? Well, okay. Uh, radical innovation here. If uh, you are here, I'm can able to elaborate a little bit about these radical innovations because. Uh, Hello, Dr. Ashok Kumar. If you are here around, can you able to kindly uh, elaborate, if possible, uh, the, the the questions that radical innovation? Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm not very sure, but this uh, trademark application and radical innovations they are not very much closely related as uh, we see this. Because if it is a kind of radical innovation, then definitely that should fit in into uh, patent protection. That is what I feel. If it is a radical innovation, then that should fit into a patent protection. But trademark is something, it is after, the, after your products are being patented, or other forms of, for example, like uh, if you have got a GI registered already, or if you have got your products being patented, or if you have got a copy, I mean, if you have got your publications or some kind of uh, intellectual property forms, which are already copyrighted, then this uh, trademark can be the aftermath of that to make your product more popular, more authentic, or in order to differentiate your product from the others, this trademark is being used. So if it is radical innovation, then that uh, could be protected under patent or in a similar forms. But trademark is rather an after made of all these uh, forms of protection. That is what I feel. Okay, for the next questions, um, how much time it takes to grant a patent in our country? Okay, so, uh, it may depend a little bit, but here I, I'm not very really sure if this our technical uh, in charge can able to dive in and help in the later sections, that could be very nice, but I don't know exactly the minimum time limit, but here usually it takes, uh, according to our own experience, it takes at least not less than a year, of course because there are so many things that is coming in. Lesser than that definitely can be done, but depending on our country, usually it takes a year, mostly like a year or minimum could be like six months. That is what, according to my experience, I've seen it. 
I don't know whether they have fixed a minimum or the maximum time because even patent, you see, we have to first go for patent searches. That is another thing where our technical in charge will give a more detail about even the copyright thing. So similar things also happens in a patent. One we do is uh, first we have to see that uh, the kind of innovation that you put forward for patent uh, patenting has no similarity elsewhere anywhere in the world so that we have to go to the database that may take a little of course now it is all digital and then you know computerized so it doesn't take that much time but then still there is a procedure that you have to even publish it so that if there is any kind of uh, you know like um, objection from the public domain if there is any objection from the public domain, then definitely the patent will turn down. So in order for all these process to be fulfilled, it definitely takes some time, but uh, perhaps it will not happen not less than six, year, uh, six months, but at least a year or so your uh, product can be patented. Okay, GI, I don't know. Uh, okay, so here, uh, can you kindly elaborate more on GI? Okay, uh, I think GI, as of now, here, the kind of, I have already told the kind of attributes that it should qualify to be registered as a GI. So this is a kind of the quality. For example, I think maybe with a little more example, the one which we have not done yet, for example, coming to our own context. Uh, for example, we have got uh, even our food types. We have lots of uh, food types uh, unique to a particular tribe. For example, for Sema, it could be Akuni, or say, for example, even bamboo shoots, or this uh, for Angami, like um, even the forms of uh, Zuto drinks, or say particularly for even this uh, Eastern Nagas, a famous beings called Kolar. These are something which we usually don't find outside uh, the States more commonly. Though it may be there here, I mean, uh, in the other parts of the country, maybe perhaps, but if at all have got the if it has got the same taste or have got the sim same pros process or procedure which will give the same uh, product, then if someone has already uh, registered SHGI under a particular name, then it could not be. But all these uh, forms of uh, uniqueness that we have, for example, as I've uh, said earlier, that we have all the traditional attires, for example, the traditional motifs, or even the like our traditional systems, all this can be uh, protected. So we have got uh, for traditional system, we have got of course a digital library for traditional systems, but that that is only for documentation purpose. For example, if a traditional sy system can be translated into a kind of product form, definitely all those can be a unit type which can be protected under geographical indication. Because geographical indication does uh, nothing, that it, it doesn't have to be very inventive, but only the existing one. So these forms of, uh, you know, like uh, this, this GI is can be done through a collective effort because uh, it is rather a bit difficult to be owned by a particular person because it, it has something to do with some kind of, uh, you know, like uh, quality. In case, like if there's a particular form, for example, it could be uh, like in handcrafts, for example, if a particular person have uh, designed that one, then definitely it can come onto GI and can be perhaps owned by an individual also, but mostly this is uh, for uh, community ownership. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Yeah, I but think yeah, it is the really other helpful. two questions maybe can we either answer it in the chat box or at the end of uh, Ma'am Dihukali's uh, session? Yeah, we're sure, sure. running a little bit out of time. In fact, it is. 
Yes, so for okay, Vivo yeah, to and Hito's question, good. yes, maybe we can take it at the end of the session or if you feel like you can answer sure. it in the chat box, that is also great. Yeah, that will be good, that will be good enough. All right, all right, thank you so well. much. Okay, thank you. Chef Uvi? Okay, thank you so much, sir. Okay, so without further ado, we will be heading to the next session. So I request all the participants not to leave the session and kindly bear with us. So for the second session, we have a very special resource person that is Ms. Gihukali Chishi, technical in charge of PIC NASIC. She holds a degree in PTAC Food Technology and has been dealing with IPR-related activities and assisting in filing of IPRs in the state. She has given around 60-plus awareness workshops on IPR in various schools and colleges, NGOs, departments, etc. She has felicitated in filing of GI of three Naga shows and is presently assisting in filing of trademarks, patents, and GI. Ms. Gihukali also deals in science popularization activities and was a coordinator for Science Connect program for three years. Ms., the time is yours. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Miss, you, you are. are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll just go directly to the presentation because we're running out of time. Do you want me to present it for you? Uh, I'll try pre uh, presenting here and if not okay. possible, okay. I'll get back to you. Is it visible? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, then uh, today I'll be talking on the topic of copyright and its application. So uh, in the first session, we have learned about all forms of IPR. So this copyright is also an another form of IPR, which I'll be talking about in details. So what is copyright? So copyright is a form of intellectual property rights and the very word to copyright the, from the very word you can see that it has the right to copy and it is a bunch of rights in certain creative materials such as texts, artistic works music computer programs sound recordings and films so the copyright owner has the right to control how the material is used so the copyright product should be existed in material format not in not in an expression or idea it should be it should exist in a material uh, format and in oxford dictionary 1850s defined as copier uh, copyright as copier of words and it is an exclusive rights given by the government for a certain term to an author composer etc to print publish sell copies of his original work so in India, copyright is protected by this Indian Copyright Act 1957. And this first act was enacted in 1914, followed by the Copyright Act 1957 with effect from 1958. And there was further amendments in 1983, 84, 92, 94, and 99. And 
uh, during this amendment, they have adopted many English provisions. English provision is British. They have uh, adopted uh, English provisions, introduced new ideas and concepts, and created copyright office and copyright pork. And they have also introduced civil and criminal remedies against any infringement. So through this A, the copyright, uh, through this A, the owner of the copyright has the rights had a certain rights that is statutory rights. Statutory rights gives the rights to reproduce your product in any material, storing in any medium, issue, copies, perform, make film or sound recordings, translation, adaptation, sell or rental, and also give you the rights to transfer. You have the right to transfer to any of your loved ones. You have the right to give to anyone. And also you have the right against any infringement caused to your work. So in then perspective on copyrights, the Copyright Act 1957 confers copyright protection in the following two forms, economic rights and moral rights. Once the owner has got the copyright protected, he has this economic rights and moral rights. So the economic rights gives you the rights to produce copies or reproduction of the work and to sell those copies and also to import or export the work to create derivative works, to perform or display the work publicly, to sell or assign these rights to others, to transmit or display by radio or video. These are the economic rights uh, posed by the owner of the copyright. And moral rights. Moral rights gives you the rights of paternity and rights of integrity. So rights of paternity gives you the rights to claim ownership of your work and also to prevent others from claiming ownership of your work without your permission. And rights of integrity prevents others from any mutilation, distortion, or any alteration of your work without a permission, which would be prejudicial to your honor or reputation. So these are the rights owned by the copyright owner. So what would you copyright? In copyright, in literary section, this article, story, poem, thesis, question papers, dictionary, encyclopedia, head notes, translation, abridgment, lectures, catalog, all these falls under literary section, which you can file for copyright. In artistic, like painting, sculpture, drawing, map, chart, etc., all these falls under copyright. And musical composition, graphical notation, all also falls under copyright. Cinematograph films, like video files, sound recordings, sound files, all this falls under copyright. But these are some kind of examples. So in literary works, you can see there's books, pamphlets, poems, articles, letters, tables and compilation, computer programs, all this falls under literary works. So you can see the symbol C and the circle symbol. This is the copyright symbol, which you must have come across in, the, in your books or in the music CDs. So this, when you see this symbol, then you should know that this is someone's protected property. And like dramatic works, recitation, choreographic work, dumb show, scenic arrangement, acting. I'm just citing this is an example, okay? And artistic like painting, sculpture, drawing, diagram, cartoon, map, chart, plan, engravings. So all this falls under copyright. And copyright in a song. Copyright in a song, you can uh, copyright your songs, music, and uh, Songs, music, and lyrics are protected by copyright as soon as you record them. Even if it's just a rough recording on your cell phone, this can be filed for copyright if it is original, authentic, authentic, and it is a uh, mere expression of your idea. So the tune, even the tune, lyrics, the drum track on the recording, chord progression in the bridge are each element and is an individual and uh, individual element and is, is an expressive part to which an author can claim uh, copyright in a song. So uh, even uh, the famous song that is Happy Birthday to You was once upon registered as a copyright song by Sunny Companies in 1935. So uh, once, once it was a copyright song, so the people were not allowed to sing Happy Birthday song public in a big crowd, in a big, arrangement otherwise uh, you have to take a permission from the sunny companies because they were the owner of the copyright song but now it is in the the copyright term is over so everybody can sing in a big crowd or in a public domain it's in public domain 
and computer programs like uh, software program tables and compilation database all these falls under literary work uh, in, in the copyright and there is a special copyrights this performer rights and broadcast reproduction rights so performers rights uh, have the special rights per performers uh, performers have the special rights to perform or engage or appear in any congregation audience they have the rights to perform and uh, performance rights have the right to prevent others from broadcasting or communicating to the public and they also have the rights to prevent others from recording or reproduction without their consent so the performers can be an actor singer musician dancer person delivering a lecture or any other person who makes a performance they have the performance rights so the broadcast reproduction rights uh, this is the rights. Uh, they have the rights to communicate or uh, to the public. They have the rights to communication to the public by means of wireless diffusion, whether in any any or more of the forms of science or sound or visual images or by wires and includes a read broadcast. So for example, like uh, IPL live telecast match uh, by the Sony uh, Sony's television, they have the rights to broadcast of the ongoing match so they have the rights to uh, they have the rights to broadcast to the television and which the if the others other television wants to broadcast they have to take license from that sony television so for example like that and they the royalty is split between them so the term of copyright so for literary dramatic music and artistic works it's 60 years uh, it's the lifetime of the owner okay the lifetime of the author plus 60 years from the death of the author and for cinematography sound recordings photograph posthumous publication anonymous and passive publication uh, the term is 60 years which is counted from the death of publication and uh, performers and broadcasting years is 25 years so they have uh, every ipr has a time bond so this copyright also have a time bond which is 60 years 60 years and 25 years for each term so why would you copyright because it rewards creative efforts made by the made by the creator or the author and also it protect interest of the creator and it help you to miss uh, it help you to uh, prevent misuse plagiarism infringement etc and also sue a person who is misusing your work and face uh, criminal criminalizing illegal illegal use of your work so like i said where copyright exists copyright exists in the expression of the idea in a material form and not just a mere idea so if you have an idea but you have not put into a material form then you cannot copyright it unless you have made it into a material form then only you can go for copyright and both published and un unpublished work are entitled for copyright so whether you have published or unpublished work both are entitled you can go for copyright protection and it is always safe to get copyright protected so that you can prevent others from misusing your uh mis misusing your work ownership so once you have filed for the copyright the applicant who has filed for the uh, copyright registration he be he becomes the owner automatically that person becomes the owner of the copyright or for example uh, in an institute or organization or in offices where somebody is working uh, and uh, for example I'll just take an institute where a person is doing a research and that person is has uh, met has published or whether he has done a research on some product and he wants to get a copyright protected then uh, he has to get uh, permission from the institute so that they share the ownership because he might be using the institute consumables materials so the ownership has to be split between the two the, the institute and the employees and uh, ex and also in joint work joint work is like like the narrator and the writer they can also share the ownership co-share the ownership 
So how do you go for registration in this copyright? So there is a certain form in uh, copyright office which you can access to the copyright office. There is a form 14. The format is also, uh, I will also show you the format. So according to that format, you have to register and do copies of your work. If you are in uh, this literary, then it, it should be in um, a four size paper and uh, in, if it is in sound then it should be in cd for cds and if it's in films like video files then it should be in dvds so two copies of the work and the fees for application ranges from 500 to 5000 depending on which work you're going to apply and there'll there'll be a time for after you have applied in the uh, copyright office it will be given time for examination so during this examination they will publish and a uh, uh, 30 day spirit will be given for ex uh, examination for uh, for yeah for the, for the public to see whether the the work is original or not and if there is no objection then that automatically it will be granted for registration so this is the format which you can find we can find it in the copyright office So there's a particular fees for each section that is literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work. It's rupees 500 per work. And for an application for registration of copyright in sound recording, it's rupees 2,000 per work. And for copyright in cinematograph films, it's 5,000 per work. So accordingly on which section you're going to apply, the fees has to be paid per work. So how how people infringe your work like if the person is use, using your work with unauthorized and illegal reproduction of work of others as a whole or a part of it without the consent of the owner that causes an infringement also if you're using it for sale or hiring the person's other person's work or if you sell distribute it to other to uh for your own benefit without the permission of the owner, that causes an infringement. But fair use does not constitute infringement. Fair use means the author, the owner will give you a certain limited uh, period which you can use it for fair use, like in private use, for research, criticisms, or for educational purposes, you can use it. But they will give you a certain limited period uh, period which you can use it and if you're going to use within that certain limited provided by the owner you have to take the permission of the owner and then only you can use it but if you use it beyond the certain limited uh, period which the author has given then it causes an infringement which is a violation of copyright act So uh, since being an in an institution, I want, want to talk in, uh, about plagiarism also because this is an act of copyright violation. So plagiarism is the presenting the words, ideas, images, sounds, or the creative expression of others as your own. And it is a copyright violation. So when you use somebody's, uh, somebody's work as your own without acknowledging the owner, then that is a pure case of copyright violation. And the word plagiarism comes from the Latin plagiarist means kidnapper. You're kidnapping somebody's other's work. So in India, UGC rules against plagiarism in Indian Institute has adopted this new policy, this which creates four tires for addressing plagiarism. So the first tire for what is called similarities up to 10% would carry no penalty. When if a, a student is doing an assignment or a thesis and that person is uh, using someone's work and have a similarities up to 10%, then that would carry no penalty. But in second tire, which 10% to 40% of the document is plagiarized by a student uh, on his thesis, then the faculty, uh, the, the students will be forced to withdraw the plagiarized paper. It will be revoked immediately. And in case where 40% to 60% of the document is plagiarized, a student, a student will be suspended for a year and the faculty members or the mentor who is helping the students would forfeit an annual pay rise and be prohibited from supervising a student for two years. And the student who plagiarized more than 60% of the thesis would be kicked out of the program while well, the penalties of the mentor would be extended to a loss of two years of pay increases and a three-year ban on supervising students. So 
as an institute, you, uh, the, the, the faculties, the teachers, and the students should be very careful when you're writing a publication or when you're writing a uh, material or, or researches. You should be very careful whether you're using, whether you are plagiarizing someone's uh, work or not. So there are different types of plagiarism. So direct plagiarism is when the plagiarist copies and pastes the text of someone else's work and neglects to cite the source or remove, remove quotation marks, then it is direct plagiarism. So among all plagiarism, direct plagiarism is the most harmful one. So when a person knowingly, intentionally, just copy paste and make it that uh, material as its own as his own then that is a direct plagiarism and it is the har most harmful plagiarism of all so uh, it, especially in india as well as even in another context we tend to copy paste someone's work a lot and uh, without without giving the due acknowledgement to the owner we tend to cause us direct plagiarism and if that person if the owner or the author has happened to know of it, then it is a case of pure uh, copyright violation. So we may face an imprisonment, okay, or, or or we may face a court charges also. So very careful. We should be very careful, especially in an educational area. <clears throat> and uh, mosaic plagiarism. In this case, when the plagiarist may have mentioned the source of the content he has referred to, but if he or she does not acknowledge the quoted part or put them under the quotation marks correctly, then the writer commits the crime of plagiarism. So uh, when you write a material or when you write uh, uh, a research, then if you're, if you're citing someone's work, always cited the source of the content which you, you have referred to and also put that phrases or the sentence or the paragraph you have taken up from someone's work in under the quotation marks men, mentioning that this is not my work this is someone else re reference i have referred to so you have to put a quotation of it so in this mosaic plagiarism though he may have mentioned the content but he has not put the phrases or the words in a quotation mark then this is a crime of mosaic plagiarism and self-plagiarism is the most common type of plagiarism, especially the students when they self-copy uh, their own last, like for last year assignment, they will self-copy it again and make it as uh, a new one and submit to the institutes. This is a self-plagiarism, okay? You just copy and paste part of the previously submitted academic paper. So this is also an act of violation by your own, uh, uh, yeah. So this is another self-plagiarism. And accidental plagiarism is when the plagiarist misquotes the phrases or parts of the text he or she has taken from the sources and does not cite the source even or adequately or cite the wrong source. So this is an accidental plagiarism, maybe like when a person, uh, he has cited the course, but has misquoted, misquoted or misquotes the ref, uh, uh, reference, or he has forgotten to uh, cite the source so this is an accidental plagiarism. So how to avoid plagiarism? Like I said, when you use somebody's work, like if you're, if you're using somebody quotation, cite phrases, sentence and paragraph, you should always give the due acknowledgement to the owner. And uh, when the paragraph is summarized, yeah, you have to give credit to the original author and give a quotation of each of the phrases or charts or graphs or drawings you have taken from the original sources. And there is also a, a plagiarism checker, which you can find it on uh, online. It is a plagiarism checker tool, which you can detect and exhibit a plagiarist content, whether inter international or not. So with the introduction of this plagiarism checker, uh, you can see that whether your documents, you can upload your documents in this online plagiarism checker and see that whether you are plagiarizing somebody's work or not. Like we, we may do it uh, unknowingly, unintentionally. So for like uh, when you're going to publish a paper or when you're going to, uh, yeah, publish a paper or do a research work on your document, the document should be, uploaded in this plagiarism checker and see that whether you're not plagiarizing somebody's work, then, then only you can rectify that. If you're plagiarizing, then you can rectify it with, before publishing it. So all these are, all these are infringement causes. Plagiarism is an infringement. So when you have infringement, infringe, there is a 
civil remedies, criminal remedies, and administrative remedies. So in civil remedies, injunction damages or account of profit, delivering of infringing copies and damage for conversion has to be paid. And in criminal remedies, imprisonment, imprisonment of six months to three years and a fine of rupees 50,000 to two lakhs, depending on the causes of infringement. And administrative remedies is, will be banned on import notice, etc. So when somebody has infringed your work, you can file the uh, civil suit in the filed in the district court or high court within whose jurisdiction the plaintiff resides or carries on business or where the cause of action has ar arose, irrespective of the place of residence or place of business of the defendant. So you can file it in the if you uh, if you are in Dimapur, then you can file it in the dis district court within your jurisdiction uh, to that defendant whoever has misused your work so the period of limitation for filing the suit is three years so within the three years of the uh, infringement you have to file the suit after three years it's no point it's no point filing a case also so we should be very uh, alert that some if somebody is using your uh, work then within the three years you have to file a case against that person so these are some of the examples uh, uh, in infringement cases so the copyright infringement cases in art so these uh, two pictures you can see in the first picture this is a photograph uh, of a couple holding a line of puppies was photographed by a photographer art rogers in 1985 so he has used this in greeting cards and merchandise and have uh, sold it in the market whereas in 1988 jeff coons he's an uh, he's an artist he's an artist and uh, he made it a sculpture of these two uh, couple like uh, very similar to the picture which we have seen in the first picture so he have made it a sculpture of it and sold it in the market making a significant profit out of it so when this photographer art rogers came to know of his uh, photograph being misused without the consent of him he sued this jeff Coons in the court and ultimately the Jeff Koons was found guilty by the court and he has to pay a significant amount of the damages caused to the photographer. So we should be very careful in using a photograph also. Like uh, it's very common that for us to for us to Google to Google uh, to the Google images and copy it and make it uh, as our own. So that also causes an infringement. Okay, when if it is a copyright protected uh, photograph. If you are going to use it, you, you should give due acknowledgement to the owner. And this is another a plagiarism cases. Uh, George Harrison, I'm sure you all know who George Harrison is, the famous Beatle member. He sang this song, uh, My Sweet Lord, in 1970, and it was a hit song, My Sweet Lord. But uh, a lawsuit was filed against him by the Bright Tune Music Corporation, who owns the copyright to this song, He Saw Fine, which the Chiffons has sang it in 1963s. So the George Harrison, unknowingly or knowingly, he has causes a plagiarism cases on this, my sweet Lord. And the court ruled out accidental plagiarism and was ordered to pay five like eighty seven thousand dollars for the damages in 1981. So you can imagine like during 1980s paying a damages of five like eighty seven thousand dollars in terms of dollars. OK, so how much he must he must have uh, losses uh, and causes the damages to the uh, bright companies who has who owns these uh, copyright songs. So very, we should be very careful also here in even using someone's lyrics, the lyrics, the tunes, all these are, well, if it is a protected property under a copyright, then we should get the permission to use it or we should never copy it, copy somebody else and make it as her own. So infringement cases again in movie, uh, I'm sure all of you must have seen this um, movie hangover movie this was a very famous hit movie so in this hangover hangover movie this tattoo was used on this actor and uh, it was found that this tattoo artist s victor whitmall has copyrighted this tattoo which he has used which he has used it on mike tesson face so this tattoo is a copyright protected art and uh, 
the Warner Brothers, the movie company who has produced this Hangover movie, they did not take the permission from the owner, from the tattoo artist who is the owner. So the tattoo artist, as Victor Widmull, he has stopped, he has tried to stop in releasing this movie. And uh, the Warner Brothers, they, they had a long time arguing in the court. And uh, finally, because the Warner Brothers also have to release the movie on time so they have come to a, an undisclosed agreement so maybe the royalties were split between the two and they had some negotiation uh, uh, giving some money to the tattoo artist so in such case so in such way the royalty can be split also if if you have taken the consent from the owner you may not have gone through the court case also but uh, since they have not taken the consent of the owner all this happened and uh, the Warner Brothers has to uh, spend money, spend have to have to give um, monetary monetary fine to the tattoo artist. So, so in this way, many people have many infringement cases has happened in all around the world, not only outside but in India also. So we should be very careful when we are using someone's protected property, like not only in copyright also, but in other forms of IPR also, without taking the consent of the permission of the owner, you should not use others someone's property. Unless you have taken the permission, you can use it, taking a license of it, taking some, paying some royalty fees, uh, royalty fees to the owner, then only you can use it. So, uh, if you have an idea of expression for, for copyright and you want to apply it, you can apply in the Copyright Office, which is in New Delhi, and uh, a, a website you can see, this is a copyright.gov.in website, where you can access to, to get the forms, as well as you can, uh, you can also go for online uh, uh, submission also. And copyright, it doesn't take time within like uh, if you have applied it within two, three months, there'll be examination for a period of 30 days is one month. So if there was no, if there is no objection, then within two, three months, you'll get a copyright registered if there is no other problem. So, and also if you have a problem in uh, getting to the copyright office and uh, you don't know where to go about and PIC is always there to help you out where to go where to, uh, we will facilitate you in filing though we may not we cannot help you financially because you have to pay some fees for this uh, registering we cannot give you the financial assistance but we can give you a facilitation and we can direct you where to go and how to file it so uh, in conclusion as you say that protecting your idea is well worth the time and effort. Initially, it may seem daunting and time consuming, but in the end, uh, when you have protected your idea, the you can prevent any other people from misusing your work without, without your consent of your permission. So uh, I'll co conclude this uh, session. Thank you. If you have any, set, any questions and answer, you can please raise the questions. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, there are questions in the chat box, so I'll read it out for you. All right, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So this is a question by Dr. Ashok. Um, the is the copyright transferable? Any guidelines for the same? That is one question. Is uh, the copyright transferable? Tra uh, once again, please. Okay, ma'am. Uh, if you feel like the speaking is not very clear to you the question is also in the chat box okay okay uh, yes yes i will read to it mm. okay. uh yeah replying to dr ashok kumar yes copyright is transferable uh you can you have the right if you have uh protected under copyright then you can transfer to any of your loved ones like there'll be there's no such guidelines but uh, it's between you and that whoever you are transferring it you can have that negotiation you can have an agreement that i have transferred to you so those those are the, uh, the things which you can uh, it's between the owner and that uh, whoever you're transferring to Any free online plagiarism checker available? Okay, yes, uh, you can check on the Google. There's lots of 
on land plagiarism checker. Uh, I don't know which may be very uh, good at it because uh, even I have not uh, done uh, this uh, plagiarism checker tools, I have not um, uh, uh, done practically, but you can find it in the Googles. There's lots of online plagiarism checker. So you can try accessing to it. Okay, then, with that, we come to the end of the session. Before I end the session, I would like to say thank you to Sir Kekunio and also Mem Diukali for making your time despite your busy schedule and instilling in us so much knowledge and making us aware of what IPR is, its importance in application, and yes, making this session extremely beneficial. In addition to that, I also would like to extend gratitude to the management team of Batsu College for allowing the triple IPR sale to organize this webinar. And finally, to the IT and media team for your present support and assistance, and to all the participants for attending the webinar. Without all of you, this webinar would have been incomplete. With that, we come to the end of the session.